Yeah, a Mars colony is an extremely stupid and dangerous idea, and it will be for the foreseeable future. And I'm here to explain why. If you've also dreamt of a Mars colony, chances are you've also been drinking Elon Musk's hopium. People like Elon Musk spend billions to brand themselves as real-life Tony Stark and have managed to convince people that our technology is far greater than it actually is. I heard someone call it the Marvel Effect, since their movies do exactly the same thing. Using words like nanotechnology makes us believe it's all possible with our current technology. And don't get me wrong, we have come a long way in terms of what we can accomplish, but colonizing Mars, let alone terraforming it, is still out of our reach. But even if we had the technology to reliably colonize Mars right now, doing so still wouldn't make a lot of sense. The average distance between Earth and Mars is a mind-boggling 230 million kilometers. But it's not just a simple point A to point B journey. Earth and Mars don't orbit the Sun at the same speed. So you can't just launch a spacecraft whenever you feel like it. Timing is everything. You have to time it right, in what's called a launch window which happens roughly every 26 months. This window is crucial because it ensures the trip to Mars will take the shortest possible time, about seven to nine months. But this isn't just a leisurely road trip. The logistical implications are severe. For starters, if a resupply mission fails for any reason, you could be looking at a more than two year delay for the next window of opportunity. That's a long time to be without essential supplies. And let's not forget the risks during the journey itself. While recent Mars missions have had lower failure rates, these were relatively simple compared to a manned mission. Landing years worth of supplies or actual colonists is a whole different ball game. For a Mars colony, we would need to send at least twice, if not three times, the amount of needed supplies, just in case one or two shipments don't make it. Cargo can stay in space longer, so pre-launching a whole lot of cargo ships might be an option, but this is still far from ideal. And what about the costs? With all the fail-safes, backups, and redundancies necessary to ensure nothing goes wrong, the costs will be astronomical, pun intended. And for what? That brings us to our next point. So, what are the potential justifications for establishing a Mars colony? The problem is, there really aren't any solid ones. First, let's address the vagaries, like it's for science or the adventure. While these sound inspiring, they don't hold up under scrutiny. In terms of scientific research, there's not much humans can do on Mars that our rovers and probes can't already accomplish. Mars is essentially a rock desert. There's little opportunity for significant scientific breakthroughs that we can achieve remotely. Next up, the idea of extracting valuable resources. Mars doesn't have any valuables in large quantities that would justify the expense of shipping them back to Earth. It would be the most unprofitable venture in human history. Then there's the overpopulation argument. Some suggest that we need to colonize Mars to address overpopulation on Earth. But with appropriate planning and technology, Earth can support vastly more people than it currently does. Overpopulation is only a problem because of our wasteful space use and inefficient food production methods. If we fix those issues, overpopulation wouldn't be a problem. Theoretically, we could house billions more people on Earth with better management. As for the idea of escaping climate change by moving to Mars, that's equally misguided. This plan only benefits the top 1% the super-rich who can afford such an escape. If a global catastrophe struck Earth, the so-called evacuation rocket would be reserved for those who can buy or force their way onto it. Even assuming we could put together a city-sized functional colony on Mars, we're not talking about a plan for all of humanity. It's a rescue mission for the planet's ruling class. The harsh realities of living on Mars would soon set in, making it clear that this is not a viable plan B for humanity. So, as we can see, the justifications for a Mars colony are flimsy at best. There are no real benefits that outweigh the massive risks and costs involved. But let's dive deeper into the practical problems of living on Mars coming up next. 
Living on Mars might sound like an epic adventure, but the reality is a nightmare waiting to happen. Let's start with the atmosphere, or rather, the lack of it. Mars's atmospheric pressure is less than 1% that of Earth. This means two things harmful solar radiation, and micrometeorites constantly bombarding the surface. Your fancy pressure suit, it's not just for show, it's your lifeline. Then there's the temperature. On Earth, the coldest temperature ever recorded was negative 89 degrees Celsius in Antarctica. On Mars, temperatures often plunge below negative 120 Celsius. And even if you have a warm period, the thin atmosphere won't retain heat. And let's not forget Mars's frozen outer core. Without a molten core, there's no magnetic shield, meaning colonists would be exposed to hazardous levels of cosmic radiation. Living underground might offer some protection, but it's a pretty grim way to spend your life. The low gravity, about one-third of Earth's, poses its own problems. We have no idea how prolonged exposure to low gravity affects human health. The longest stay in microgravity so far is less than a year. What about pregnancies, cardiovascular health? muscle and bone density. Who wants to be the first to find out? And don't be fooled by those sleek CGI domes on the Martian surface. They're pure fantasy unless you're planning on an early death. The only realistic option is living in an underground bunker, venturing outside occasionally when there isn't a solar flare. Combine all these lethal hazards with the claustrophobic living conditions and you have a recipe for disaster. But if you think that's bad, wait until we talk about the mental toll on living on Mars. The physical dangers of living on Mars is just the tip of the iceberg. The psychological effects on colonists could be even more catastrophic. Isolation, confinement, and the constant threat of death aren't exactly conductive to mental well-being. Some might argue we don't know the psychological effects for certain because there's no precedent. But they're wrong. We have precedent, and it's not encouraging. Take Antarctica, for example. Despite its breathable atmosphere and fresh water, it has no permanent residence. Scientists working there suffer from winter over syndrome, characterized by depression, irritability, insomnia, and memory deficits. Now, imagine this, but without the breathable atmosphere with deadly hazards outside, and the thought that you'll never go home. That's life on Mars. A course article put it aptly, living in a Mars colony would be like living with a colony of zombies. Knowing your life depends on fragile systems that could fail at any moment is a recipe for mental breakdowns. Imagine if one colonist starts a fire, sabotages the life support system, or opens an airlock. Everyone could be dead in minutes. Over time, every colonist would be dealing with some level of mental instability. So, before we dream of living on Mars, we need to consider the harsh reality. This isn't a sci-fi adventure, it's a mental health crisis waiting to happen. Terraforming Mars, the ultimate sci-fi fantasy, turning a dead, red planet into a thriving Earth 2.0. Sounds amazing, right? But let's be real, terraforming Mars is pure magic at this point. We simply don't have the resources or technology to make it happen, no matter what Elon Musk wants you to believe. First off, creating an atmosphere according to NASA. If you combined all the potential sources of greenhouse gases on Mars, you'd get an atmosphere only 6.9% that of Earth's. Even nuking the Martian ice caps, as suggested by some, would barely get it up by 1.2%. That's nowhere near enough. Without a thick atmosphere, you can't retain heat or block harmful radiation. Mars's surface would remain a hostile environment, even if by some miracle we managed to create a breathable atmosphere. We'd still face monumental challenges like stabilizing the climate, creating liquid water sources, and maintaining soil fertility. But let's entertain the fantasy for a moment. Suppose we overcome all these obstacles, the timeline for terraforming would still span centuries. That's a long time to wait while investing untold billions of dollars with no guarantee of success. Moreover, even if we succeeded, we'd have to constantly maintain the terraformed environment. Any lapse in maintenance could mean a rapid return to Mars's natural hostile state. It's like trying to keep a balloon inflated in a room full of nails. One wrong move, and everything deflates. So, while the idea of a lush, green Mars is enticing, it's firmly in the realm of science fiction for now. Our efforts and resources could be much better spent elsewhere.
Instead of pouring billions into an improbable Mars colony, why not focus on solutions right here on Earth or closer to home? There are plenty of better alternatives that could yield real benefits in our lifetime. First up, the Moon. It has no atmosphere, much like Mars, but it's only three days away from Earth. If something goes wrong, a rescue mission is feasible. Plus, the Moon's proximity allows for more frequent supply missions, reducing the risk of critical shortages. Establishing a base on the Moon could have numerous benefits. We could build an observatory free from Earth's atmospheric interference, a spaceport taking advantage of lower gravity, and even a massive solar power station beaming energy back to Earth. These are practical, achievable goals that would advance our space exploration capabilities. But let's not stop there. There are vast, uninhabited regions on Earth that we could terraform with our existing technology. The Sahara Desert, for instance. By developing methods to irrigate and cultivate these areas, we could provide new habitats and resources without leaving our home planet. Investing in sustainable technologies to combat climate change and protect our biosphere is another critical area. Instead of planning an escape route to Mars, let's focus on ensuring that Earth remains habitable for future generations. Renewable energy, efficient food production, and better urban planning could drastically improve our planet's carrying capacity. Furthermore, underwater habitats offer a unique alternative. The ocean covers over 70% of our planet's surface, yet remains largely unexplored. Underwater colonies could harness geothermal energy from ocean vents and provide new opportunities for research and habitation. So, the reality is that we have plenty of exciting and viable options right here on Earth which can yield tangible benefits much sooner and more reliably than a Martian colony ever could. And there you have it. Folks, the dream of colonizing Mars might be captivating, but the reality is far from glamorous. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. 